Oh guys, let's talk about the percentage of sales na method. And I have here two illustrations. The first one is very straightforward. Yung pangalawa, may konting computation bago mo makuha kung ano talaga yung nire-require ng problem. So let's talk about the first illustration. So please follow me as I read the illustration. And I hope you jot down notes uh, para masundan ninyo ako sa aking computation. So i-ready nyo na rin ang inyong mga calculator. Uh, during 2019, si Company A had net credit sales of 600,000. Its accounts receivable and allowance for uncollectible accounts as of December 2019 before adjustment are as follows. 100,000 and 2,000 respectively. Anong ibig sabihin guys ng respectively? Para lang klaro ano, lalong-lalo na doon sa mga medyo nahihirapan sa analysis. Pag sinabi sa problem na respectively, kung ano yung naka-indicate dito ng mga accounts, halimbawa, it's AR and allowance for uncollectible accounts are as follows. Yung 100,000, ang ibig niyang itukoy dyan ay yung accounts receivable, yung nauna. Yung 2,000, yung sumunod. So, bali, naka order siya doon sa kung papaano ito in-identify first sa statement. So, kung AR muna bago yung allowance o yung 100,000 refers to the AR and then the 2,000 refers to the allowance. So, I hope I made it clear and naintindihan nyo na ngayon yung ibig sabihin ng term na respectively. O now, following on the next paragraph 1%. 1% ay isang porsyento, ano? of the net credit sales is deemed uncollectible based on past experiences. O dito, kailangan meron kayong keen eye. The keen eye. <laughs> Nakaturo ako sa kokote. Ano? Um, kasi, meron kang tatlong amounts dyan, tatlong figures. The 600,000, the 100,000, and then the 2,000. So, yung 1%, saan mo i-apply? Is it the 600, the 100, or the two. O, dapat alam ninyo kung sino si net credit sales dito. Kasi ang tinutukoy ay 1% of net credit sales. At yung net credit sales natin ay yung 600,000 pesos. O, now, this is the computation. You have your net credit sales of 600,000. What is 1% of 600,000? Once you have your calculator, you will get the amount of 6,000. Ngayon, sir, wala akong calcu na iwan ko, e quiz or test. O di magmamano-mano ka ngayon. Kasi hindi ko naman iaalaw na magkakalculator ka gamit yung cellphone mo. Mamaya i-text mo yung katabi mo or yung kaklase mo, maghingi ka ng tulong kay Mr. Google. <laughs> so, bawal yan. O kailangan gagamitin mo yung kukote mo. 1% is 1 over 10 of 10%. <laughs> Pinagulo ko lalo, ano? 1 over 100 is your 1%. O, 10% is 1 over 10. O, alam mo, 10%, 600,000 times 10%, that is 60,000. O, kunin mo ulit yung 10% ng 60,000, you will arrive at 6,000. Or, 600,000 divided by 100, tanggalin natin yung dalawang zero, you will get 6,000 pesos. So, that's how you compute when you have no calculator in hand. Kaya kailangan may mga calculator kayo palagi when you are taking a pure accounting subject. Otherwise, oh, bye-bye sa'yo, lilipad yung isip mo. <laughs> Babagsa ka pa sa mga quizzes. Oh, what is our journal entry? What oh, journal entry ka agad, sir? Yes. Kasi dito, straightforward nga, ba? Kung ano yung makukumpute mo dyan, yan na yung expense account. Because, again, ang topic natin is percentage of sales. So, dito, 600,000 times 1%, yan na mismo yung expense account mo. Kaya, we debit allowance, uh, debit doubtful accounts expense, 6,000, and credit allowance for doubtful accounts. O ngayon, tama ba ito? The answer is correct. Huwag na kayong magduda, yun na mismo. Pero sir, sandali, kasi sa illustration, ang ginamit mo na account ay allowance for uncollectible accounts. Akala ko ba consistency ang kailangan? Consistency is the key. 
Yes, correct. O kung ito yung account na ginamit mo, allowance for uncollectible accounts, ang gamitin mo dito na expense ay uncollectible accounts expense. O in this case, consistent pa rin ba? The answer is yes. Kasi doubtful accounts expense ang ginamit ko sa expense, yung allowance ko ay allowance for doubtful accounts. Consistent pa rin tayo. O guys, if you have any questions on this, please let me know by commenting on the comment section. That is our illustration number one na sinasabi ko nga, very straightforward. Eh, how about illustration number two? Sa illustration number two, oh, basahin natin ano at sundan ninyo ako. During 2019, Company B had a total sales of 1,500,000, 60% of which represents sales on account. Prior to adjustment, the balances of the accounts were as follow. You have your accounts receivable for 200,000. You have your allowance for uncollectible accounts for 13,000. You have your uncollectible accounts expense for 5,000 pesos. And it was determined that 1.5% of net credit sales is deemed uncollectible. O bakit hindi ito ganun ka straightforward? Kasi kailangan mo pang identify magkano yung net credit sales. At hindi ibig sabihin na meron ka na ditong total sales, eh ikukumpute mo na agad yung 1.5 gamit itong 1,500,000. Pag inumpute mo yan, mali ka na agad. Because you forgot to consider that 60% of the 1.5 million represent sales on account. So ibig sabihin, sa total na 1.5, 60% ay sales on credit and 40% ay cash sales transactions. So, Paano mo kukunin yung net credit sales? You simply multiply 60% to your 1.5 million. So, I have here the computation. Yung total sales ko daw, 1.5. O percentage of sales on account is 60%. Kaya, yung credit sales ko, 900,000. O kung tinatanong sa problem, magkano yung cash sales? That is your 40%, which is 600,000. O in this case, ang relevant ay yung 600, ah, sorry. Ang relevant dito ay yung 900,000 because that is your net credit sales. O we multiply 1.5% to the net credit sales para makuha natin yung uncollectible accounts expense. In this case, the 13,500. O kaya dito, yung journal entry natin ay debit doubtful accounts expense and credit allowance for doubtful accounts for 13,500. O ayan ka na naman sir, doubtful accounts expense na naman at allowance for doubtful accounts yung ginamit mo. O as long as it is consistent. O kaya ko yan ginanyan para mas ma-emphasize ko sa inyo yung consistency. Not necessarily na yung nasa problem ginamit dito ang collectible accounts. Ayun yung i-journalize mo. Better kung yun, pero kung hindi ka comfortable doon, eto yung ginamit mo tatamaan pa rin naman yan ng prof mo. O kung minalian ka dyan, ay yung prof mo yung may tama. <laughs> okay? O guys, that's how we do it. Ano? Now, I want to emphasize yung ibang mga items. Okay? Kasi may mga ibang questions na maaring iba to gamit yung given na case sa illustration number 2. O, prior to adjustment kasi, yung mga balances mo ng tatlong accounts were as follow. Yung AR mo, 200,000. Yung allowance for uncollectible accounts mo, 13,000. May mga balance na, ba? Yung uncollectible accounts expense mo ay 5,000. Tapos, eto yung ating journal entry sa ngayon. Doubtful accounts expense, 13,500. Tapos, credit sa allowance for doubtful accounts na 13,500 din. Pag ang tinanong, what is the new balance of your doubtful accounts expense after adjustment? O kaya naman, what is the new balance of your allowance for doubtful accounts? O, gawan mo ito ng T-account. Kasi not really, uh, not necessarily na yung makukuha mo doon sa journal entry mo, yun din yung sagot. Kasi in this case, may mga previous balances ka. May mga beginning balances prior to adjustment. E pag tinanong ka, what is the adjusted balance of these accounts? Okay? So you have it here. Yung doubtful accounts expense mo, o may 5,000 ka na beginning balance. Tapos nag-add ka ng 13,500. 
yung balance ngayon ng doubtful accounts expense mo na nasa income statement will be 18,500. Sa allowance for doubtful accounts mo naman na nasa balance sheet as contra receivable, 13,000 yung beginning balance, nag-add ka ng 13,500. Now, the adjusted balance will be 26,500. Uh, be very careful kung ano yung tinatanong ng problem. Otherwise, mag magkakamali ka. Kasi nagawan mo nga ito ng journal entry pero hindi naman pala yun yung tinatanong. So, be careful. O oh, guys, illustrate ko lang yung concept ng net realizable value, no? Kasi your accounts receivable here is 200,000. Walang mababago dyan, ano? Uh, kahit na i-adjust mo yung uncollectible accounts expense. Kasi, ang effect naman yan ay doon sa doubtful accounts and sa allowance for doubtful accounts. As is yan na 200,000. Pero pag yung tinanong sa problem, what is the net realizable of your accounts receivable? O, 200,000 less 26,500. O, the answer will be the NRV. O, in this case, confirm mo, ano, kung 173,500 yan. Wala kasi akong calculator on my side. Ano. O, that is your NRV or net realizable value. So, guys, madali lang ba yung percentage of sales? Oh, please let me know on the comment section. So, until then, I'll see you around at the next episode for us to discuss the aging of receivables method. So, maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig and bye-bye!